Hi guys, this is a quick video talking about TinyTest. TinyTest is a PHP testing framework designed for doing functional style testing. It aims at being extremely fast and including integrated support for both call grind file formats that are supported by kcashgrind on Linux, as well as um, LCOV file coverage information so you can get code coverage reports right inside your IDE. All this in less than a thousand lines of code. Let's check it out. So in order to run a tidy test, you're going to need PHP, at least version 7.0. I'm using version 7.2. Anything that's been uh, within the last four years should be fine. In order to get code coverage information, you're going to need PHP DBG. It's the debug version of PHP. This version of PHP allows us to get um, all the call stack information of exactly which lines of code were executed. Um, and this is how we generate the call grind file. There's a bunch of options for how to load tests. You can use dash D to load all the tests inside a directory. Use dash F to load a single file. Dash T allows you to load just a single test. Dash I allows you to load a test type and if I'll show you guys what test types are. We specify tiny test in the examples directory and we just list those tests, that's dash L. This column right here is the test type. This is a type annotation on the test. And you can include or exclude tests based on their type annotation right at the command line. You can exclude as many as you want or include as many as you want. Uh, we also have support for bootstrap files. You can either specify the full path to the bootstrap with dash B or have it auto detect. This will load any bootstrap.php file in your test directory. This is where you can put things to load in any of your test requirements. This file is loaded just one time per invocation. Dash C, like I said, is used to generate the LCOV info. Before you do that, make sure you use PHP debug with the dash QRR options for calling tiny tests. If you don't use dash QRR, PHP debug is going to dump you this little prompt and you're going to have to exit and it's not going to be what you want. So make sure when you run PHP debug, you do PHP DBG QRR. That looks like this. And then we can specify dash D examples dash, what's our code coverage? Dash C. We're going to go out and show you one more option we have here. Dash R. That's going to show code coverage totals right in the console. So if we run this, we generate in our lcov.info. You can look at the lcov.info by using uh, tiny test and use this code coverage plugin. This is my BS Studio code plugin extensions. The code coverage gutters extension I'm currently on 2.60. I think 2.7 is already out. And if you want to show code coverage, just right click. It gives you these guys right here. Click on uh, display coverage and you can see coverage based on that lcov file directly in your browser. Here's our LCOV output from our tiny test run. So <clears throat> you should only use the PHP debug when you're generating code coverage information because it does consume a ton of memory. Um, so we're working on that. We've made some changes recently to tiny test to include test run statistics for every run. And when you use PHP debug, this includes a ton of debugging information. So. Right now we default at 512 megabytes, which should be, you should be able to store about 500 or 600,000 test runs per invocation. We do a ton of testing here for fire, for Bitfire, because uh, we, we test all kinds of input parameters. So we definitely push it. So if we do tiny test dash H, Code coverage, we can squelch PHP error reporting if you're getting PHP notices in the console. Turn that off with dash S. You can get really verbose output with dash V. This will show you stack traces. If you want quieter output, do dash Q. You can do that as many times as you want until you get almost no output at all. So if we do PHP, we don't want, we don't want debug. We want PHP and we want dash Q, dash Q, dash Q. And we can see 5,000 tests, 5,019 5, pass, four megs of memory in seven milliseconds. Um, code coverage, profiling. If you want to get the cache grind data, just do dash K. 
Now this will generate a different output file for every um, for every test that you run. So if you do dash K and you run 600 tests, you're gonna have 600 output files. So let's limit that to just a single test. We'll do uh, something risky. That's it, that sounds exciting. Right. So we have cat dash K to generate our cache grind file, dash T to run just that one test. There's our one test. And if we look here, we have one call grind file now. So call grind that test something risky. You can open this in the K cache grind uh, application. And here's a run we did earlier, and you can see the call emap, and you can see exactly where all of your time's going. You can double click and drill down and spend all kinds of time in here figuring out why your code's running so slow or running so fast. Hopefully your code's running super fast. So uh, that's almost it. The only other thing I want to show you guys is there's this really cool file called user defined that allows you to override all of the test format. These are the test formatting options. This formats what a test run looks like. This formats what a test success looks like. And this formats what a test error looks like. You can also override what's included and defined as a test and what's defined as a test file. By default, anything that begins with test, it, or should is included as a test case and will get run if it's loaded by the test runner. If you want to see what test assertions are available, you can look at assertions. And we have just the basic assertions, test assert true, assert false, contains, is equal to, not equal to, greater than, less than. Um, the ones with the I are ignore case. Um, so assert equals ignore case. Assert ignores case contains. Assert instance of, assert not contains. They're pretty basic. Um, you can go ahead and add your own to this or dump your own assertions into the user defined class I showed you earlier. Um, what else? Oh, let's show you what one of the tests looks like. We go to examples, test data provider. You have, so when you specify a data provider, the next line is a function to call. So here's multiplication test data. For every value this returns, we're gonna call test, it's gonna call test multiplication with whatever this is. So in this case, it's an array. And this is gonna have our first value, our second value, and then the answer. And here we're gonna multiply the first value by the second value, and we're gonna assert that it's equal to the third value. If it doesn't work, we get multiplication failed. So you can also throw an exception and that'll generate an error. Um, if you have an exception, you can add the at exception annotation and that will mark that as an accepted annotation that is acceptable. I don't know why you do that, but you might need to. Um, if you look at the readme, we have more detailed documentation about all the functionality that we support. And there's also a video that gets updated from Zenorama or ASCII-Rama. ASCII, anyway. It's a console output session. Uh, go check that out, it's really good, and we keep that one a little more up to date than this video. And with that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, I hope you learned something, I hope you can find Tiny Test useful. It doesn't necessarily replace PHP Unit, it doesn't have all the functions that PHP Unit does. PHP Unit is more designed at enterprise function testing, and we're designed at just get it done. Just run the simplest test. And we also encourages us to keep our tests really small, really pure, and really functional. So with that, take care guys, see you next time.